So Firebase, who has been using Firebase in some way or another? Please raise your hand. Okay, so about a half. This is great. So what my talk will be about? First, we'll talk about what Firebase is, uh, what kind of features does it have, and then we'll uh, slightly touch mobile and IoT field. Uh, what SDK uh, for mobile does Firebase provides, and also on the very last, we'll think about what kind of cool, super interesting projects you can build with Firebase, and actually for what pro type of projects it's great at. Yeah, because if you'll just use a tool in every way, probably you won't end with a good solution. But there will be some examples. So my name is Alexey. This is a, a second slide. And what I'm doing, I'm basically organizing some stuff. Judy uh, Riga, Drew, and Riga Dev Day, and also I'm working in Citadella Banca, uh, which I'll talk a bit about in the end of the presentation. So Firebase. And let's try to look into it. So what kind of features uh, it provides? So first of all, Firebase is not a framework, it's not a library, but it's a set of tools. And the organizer, uh, the, the creators of Firebase, are trying to distinguish it in a couple of parts. So first part is most interesting for us today, is develop part. So Firebase has a real-time database, which will get deep in, in, in a few minutes. So this is something like one document of MongoDB, so to say. It has feature with authentication that you can use OAuth 2.0 with all the major uh, providers like Facebook, Twitter, uh, GitHub, etc. It provides static hosting for your websites if you have it and you want to use it. Also, storage, which is quite great. So in earlier days of mobile development, you had to use some kind of Dropbox or other solution to store your uh, local files of a user. So here, they have it built in, and you can use it with other tools that uh, Firebase provides. Cloud messaging. So cloud messaging will be covered by Philip in the next presentation. Remote config, also interesting thing. So key value pairs that allow you to configure users, user setting, and how they react to different uh, application scenarios. Some part on app quality services, which we'll also cover. Then there is Grow stuff. So Grow is AdWords and different possibilities and options for you to grow your user base. We'll touch it slightly. I'm no expert in growing user base in Firebase, but possibly you'll get some interesting ideas out of it. The third one is Earn, is AdMob and how you can earn money by using Firebase. And the last but not the least is Analytics. Yeah. So Firebase is all about cross-platform, which is really great, and you can already use it not only for Android, not only for iOS, and for web, but with them all together. And the idea is that all the toolkits that are provided by Firebase are integrated in one single console. And you can just take them and see everything from all your three uh, main apps. So let's get started with Firebase. So first, uh, this is a console which you will possibly get when you created a project. And here it's quite easy for you to just grab and decide what, that, what kind of project would you like to use. Either it's an Android app, it's an iOS app, or it's a web app. We just click on it, and we get a pop-up. Yeah? So on this stage, we're, we'll configure an iOS application quite simple one. So we'll write down the bundle ID that we'll need for configuration. It will create an info list file we'll just put into our project settings containing all the configuration and tokens and all that stuff. And then uh, we have a simple way of grabbing the libraries we need for Firebase. So for Xcode, you have Cacao pods and you just go port Firebase and it's done. For Android, you have G Center or Maven Central when they have Firebase uh, jar files uploaded. And for web, you can use npm install and also you'll get all the Firebase stuff. And the very least you can do with Firebase is just say configure or init. And this way, you'll have some analytics already running by default. You don't need to configure anything else. And 
here we go. Here we have a simple app already using Firebase. And let's explore it. So uh, analytics. What kind of data can we get out of the box from Firebase? Uh, and yeah, it's, it's free. So uh, we have an app, sample app called Bingo Blast. Let's try to take a look. So here are different projects in this sample for two platforms, for Android and iOS. We have uh, information about active users, about in-app purchases. We can track different, uh, the, the, the daily timeline and all, all the stuff we need to understand how much user and, and how our features and our users reacting to features, right? So also there is an event thing that allows us to uh, send custom analytic events. For example, achievements page viewed, up installed, up updated, etc. And also, we can view the time period and how you, uh, how this event was was used by the application during the timeline. Yeah? So this is quite interesting. One, the analytics isn't best, and some say it's it's bad, but for simple use cases, it could be enough. If you have uh, more, more. I don't know, unique things, then possibly you'll need to have another solution. Yeah? So one thing that is missing is that here we're just tracking count of events. We cannot uh, see the, uh, the, the, the data between it. So if we'll create a pay, uh, push it something event with an amount of money, will not be able to get a sum of it, get an average of it, et cetera, et cetera. This is not yet working. So this is only a count. And also, all these events have audiences. So with authentication methods, you can try to uh, put different user categories. So for example, all users, all users who has purchased something, and using the mailing lists, you can then uh, give different properties to them, for example, uh, enable disable features, or target some kind of promotions. For example, for China market, you would like to have a smart promotion with something for Europe, you don't want to do it. Or for holidays, for example. Yeah. And also, we can look at different filters. So here we're looking at purchases, purchasers who has purchased something from our application we can then understand what is the difference between total user amount, purchasers, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah? And we can also track between different events. For example, tutorial begin, tutorial complete. So here we see the amount of users start of the tutorial, and here are the completed part. So we know that Delta uninstalled the application or just closed it after tutorial started because it didn't like it. So developing your app, which is the most interesting for us. So we already covered the, the basics of what Firebase provides for us with developing. And first, and I think the, the most important for me for Firebase is the real-time database. So what database does Firebase provide? So it's a NoSQL database. You have no schema. Yeah? It's a sp simple JSON. If, in, if we look at, for example, this is a snapshot of our regular of day uh, Firebase application, <coughs> and here, we can see that this is uh, just a view on a JSON. We have uh, root object and properties, block, partners, resources, schedule, session, settings, speakers, team, et cetera. Yeah. And Firebase will provide this database over HTTP as RESTful service. So we can just do a, JSON, uh, do a GET request on block.json and we'll receive this part of our database. If we would like to have a brief field, we can just say block slash zero slash brief. Yep. So next, we can also use some kind of filtering for this. So here, there is also a sample uh, Firebase application and which contains different kind of dinosaurs. And for example, we would like to have one dinosaur that is the highest. 
And here is the query parameters we can use with order by height limit to first equals one. So the querying format is not that expressive as all data or GraphQL, but at least it, it allows you to do something with it. Yeah? So for simple use cases, this is kind of great. And this database will work with all your, with all your uh, platforms. So it's, uh, Firebase has an iOS SDK already, Android SDK, JavaScript SDK, and also right now they're working in beta with Unity SDK and C++. Also, if you look in, at, at GitHub, you'll see so there will be some C Sharp unofficial SDKs, et cetera, et cetera. So this stuff is already simplified with libraries. But you can use it in any application, in any language that you would, you would like to. But then you just have to work with all those query parameters and HTTP headers. Another great thing is that in this SDKs that Google provides, they have a built-in caching mechanism. And caching is a really pain in mobile applications because when suddenly you lose your traffic, you're out of data. And here, it will automatically cache and handle recaching synchronization for uh, your data that you fetch. Also, authentication, which I have mentioned before. So using standard OAuth 2.0 protocol, it allows you to uh, add Google, Facebook, Twitter, and GitHub sign-in authentication with almost one line or, or two lines. So it even has a, a built-in UI component, which you can just invoke, but you can stylize it if you want. So after you have this authentication, you can use it both in uh, analytics. For example, you can assign different users in different groups based on criteria where they're located or their age or something else. And also, uh, Firebase has a set of rules for the database, which allows you to restrict different kind of data for write and uh, read and writes. For example, here we have rule about the database that public, you can read public in any way as a public API, but write is prohibited for non-authorized users. In this case, you can think if you have an application and you want to have users, then OK, they'll be able to write. But also, you can create a technical user, and then uh, you'll have a RESTful service that only technical users can update, for example, which is also good. And private here is false, so we'll get a permission denied. Okay. So there is a, a, a simple procedure for, to handle different uh, read writes and also validations. So there is a validation framework built in, not that expressive again, but for some needs it, 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 it will be enough. For example, here we say that on node foo in JSON, we say that we can only put in a string with a length less than 100. Yeah? So all the stuff who is working with Java, with, uh, so the same stuff that bin validation does can be done in uh, Firebase. Yeah? And also, in this rules section, you have indexes. So you can index heights, lengths, and then using those query parameters, which I've shown somewhere, you can optimize those kind of queries. Yeah? Um, one of the problems, though, is that you should keep your JSON flat, or try to. So Firebase supports only 32 uh, nodes into depths. After it, it will throw an error. Uh, but Google and Firebase team suggest you to try to flatten your structure as much as possible. So the same way you do uh, schemas with tables. You have flat tables which has relationships. Here is the same. So this is a bad example, as they say, because we have chats. We have one chat with a, some kind of name, a set of messages, and senders. And to flatten the structure, what can we do? We can say that we have a chat 
with a last time step last message. And then this chat will be referenced from members. So if we want to fetch all the members of the chat, we just say members one. We get all the members. And the messages are also can be fetched by messages one. So as you can see, it's like a foreign key relationship here. So something of a mix between a flat document uh, of a document and a table structure. So what else does real-time database provide us? So we have seen get examples. There is a post method available at Firebase. The post method will create you a new item with an unique identifier. So it will uh, always generate some kind of object with a unique primary key. So put will enable you to update some kind of data. And it, it is used uh, more often than anything else. And the patch, which is kind of also useful, allows you to just patch one or two or three uh, fields in your uh, JSON. And also delete is working, right? So all the stuff we need theoretically is there. So it's a simple RESTful service with some minor validation, right? So also, I've been talking about storage. Storage is a tool for you to store user data or your personal data. For example, if you would like to have a web uh, shop built in with Firebase, you can store different images here. If you would like to have some kind of chat for your users, user can store their photos here. So it's either for you or for the user. And here is an example how it looks. So you have a console, you can see all those files. For example, if you're using, if, you're, if you want to build an enterprise app for users to upload documents, PDF documents, they can also uh, be uploaded here. So next is cloud messaging, which Philip will be talking about. So uh, Google has migrated its uh, Google Cloud Messaging framework into Firebase and is trying to accumulate all the mobile needs in the file-based tools, which with more and more tools coming in, in, in the nearest future. Remote config, which is quite interesting, it's uh, server-side key values. So for example, if you would like to do a promotion, for example, Halloween party, you can uh, install everything you need for this Halloween special in your applications but then just trigger it uh, online with a switch. Yeah? So this is how all the gaming uh, companies are doing. So they are preparing uh, everything they need beforehand and then just triggering a switch on their server. So this could be quite useful for you. Or for example, you could store prices for your, uh, for your web shop, either here or in a real-time database. And when the variable will change, it'll automatically be updated on all the apps you will see. And also, this remote config can be profiled for different types of categories of users, as we have seen. So all the authenticated users, you can split them into iOS, Android. You can do some kind of queries like below 10% for A-B testing, for different localities, for different countries, etc. And uh, here is a simple view how you can, you can do it. So you have a parameter key, and you have different values for different groups. The default one and the Canadian purchasers. <coughs> Test lab for Android. So also, if you would like to run your Espresso or Robotium tests, you can use Test lab for Android. And also an interesting thing that is built in Okay, it's, it's robot tests. So Google provided an automatic way for you to do monkey testing of some point. So you can take your app, say that you want to, to it to be tested automatically, select on which devices you would like to do it, and then Google will automatically construct a navigation information of your app by seeing that there are some kind of buttons, there are some kind of navigation drawers, et cetera, et cetera. And this is artificially built navigation of your app. 
and test lab will try to do all those actions and see if it's working and if it's not crashing. If it will crash, you'll get an error, you will see it, and also you can track and understand how much users were affected by this crash, on which devices, and uh, also get information for both Android and iOS. So here we see a stack trace for iOS, right? So that's all for the development part we've covered. And the next part is growing a business. So here we had interesting dynamic links, invites, adverse notification, app indexing. We'll try to get uh, by them shortly. So what first, the interesting thing is invites. So invites allows you to create URLs for your applications for a concrete app screen. For example, uh, imagine you have a game, you would like to invite some player to play with you. Or you would like to uh, give a discount for something. So you can construct a URL and send it to a user either via SMS, email, or some other means. And when a person will click this link, it will uh, automatically open a website, uh, automatically open an application. So here we can show you how standard, standard uh, tools are working. So if you say, here is the link to an application, usually you click on it, you get a website, you then click on install it on Google Play and App Store, then you click install, and then you manually, you get to main screen, and you need to manually go somewhere. With this kind of invite from Firebase, you can automatically install and then be redirected to a place where you are invited to. For example, to a game from your friend who is interested in playing some uh, Hearthstone or I don't know, something. Yep. So there are external libraries that do this stuff. Here it's built in. <coughs> and this invite system is using this din the dynamic links. So what dynamic links means? You can create a link with URL and uh, it will be shown like this. So there will be a proxy link to your link. And at any point, you can either cancel this link, you can change the URL to which it is located, and you have all the analytics for it. Okay? So you can understand how, how uh, your different campaigns are working. For example, campaign in Europe, campaign in America, etc., etc. Also, uh, AdWords SDK is built into Firebase, so you can see the monetization and uh, the advertisement part of it in Firebase Console. And also app indexing. So not a long time ago, I think uh, last I.O., Google I.O., so you released an interesting part that when you search at Google, you can uh, see already links uh, shown as a link to your application. For example, if you search for some actor, I don't know, Mel Gibson, you'll, <coughs> you'll get a card, you click on it, and it will re redirect you to IMDb with Mel Gibson on it. How does it work? Because the URL schema is being understood by the system, and it knows what kind of applications are using this schema. For example, HTTP www.imdb.com. Okay? <coughs> and with app indexing, you can also uh, say to what kind of screen would you like to navigate using this dynamic link. So notifications, again, so this part will be covered by Philip and how you can uh, push notification to your users and say about some important stuff you would like to have with your application, etc. So the last like pie chart is earn. So by earn, there is an ad mob again built in so you can see how your ads, ads are working, how much revenue do you get, but yeah, this, this is out of scope for that. So uh, during last I.O., when Firebase was announced, a lot of helpful information was done uh, by the Google team. So you have all kinds of presentation available here on firebase.preso. 
And also, there are code labs for all the systems. So if you'd like to try Firebase with, with iOS, or with Android, or with web, or with cross-platform applications, you can find them here and do a step-by-step -step guide with configuring Firebase, writing an application, and getting the result done. So this is the most interesting part. When you uh, see a new product, a new tool, usually do not understand how you can use it. So now let's try to brainstorm what kind of good use cases for Firebase there is. Because you couldn't just write any application without a server side with Firebase. It won't work. Because you'll have to have some kind of tricky logic, tricky validation logic will not be covered by Firebase, but that doesn't mean that Firebase sucks. It sucks in, in this uh, concrete example. Yeah? So for example, we have RigaDevDay. RigaDevDay website right now is using Firebase. And all the schedule information, all the speaker's information, and all the content is being stored on Firebase. Why is this so? First, because we can update it without uh, disturbing the static page, disturbing the HTML, CSS part. The second thing is that all the mobile applications now have a RESTful service. So we don't need any validation, and we're using it only in read-only mode. We don't have any writes. We don't have any users. So this is just a, 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 a way to express a JSON and be allowed to change it. For new GDG Riga website that uh, Sergey and Ilya built, we're also using Firebase. Here it's more interesting because we have all the cards of all the events we have done at GDG Riga, and they are being populated by a Zapier service. So every time we create a meetup event, like today when we created hash code, uh, Zapier is being triggered by meetup.com. And then Zapier writes to Firebase a new entry. And thus, we get an update on our website. <laughs> Quite interesting. So with, with all free tools that are on the market, with Zapier, with Firebase, we've created a platform <laughs> that does the job. But it's free. It has some dynamic logic that you couldn't do with static files without uh, a recompilation of HTML, JavaScript, and static files. So next thing is, for example, if you would like to have a, a voting device, yes, no, or I, I don't care, you could use Firebase, simple service, and the device could just post updates to Firebase if it's a no, if it's a yes, if it's I don't care. Next, smart home. You could have one Firebase service as your main smart home configuration. Because what does smart home house need? It just needs different variables on different set of tools. For example, uh, the light bulb in the kitchen is on, it's off. What is the temperature in the kitchen? What, uh, what is it? Is floors are hot or not, right? So you don't need to write a big application server side, deploy it somewhere, have a server, you can use Firebase and just connect all your smart devices via Wi-Fi to Firebase. They'll grab automatically all the updates and uh, job done, basically. Next thing, uh, for example, a, a question and answer uh, application. You would like to present something and you would like your users to give you some kind of questions. Firebase could be a good fit. You just express the RESTful service with authentication, people can just write uh, questions for you, and you'll receive them and will be able to moderate them and answer them. Yeah? What else interesting in the Firebase field right now is that this week, Google has announced that the Fabric team, uh, previously Twitter, was announced, uh, was, was, is joining Firebase, and soon some parts of Fabric, or all parts of Fabric, we don't know yet, will be merged into Firebase and will grow even more. And with the Fabric uh, joining Google, Fastlane, the tool for iOS, for deployment to uh, App Store and uh, uh, handling 
IO certificates, doing screenshots, and all that stuff is also joining Google. So this would be even more interesting because Fastlane is a tool primarily considered for iOS. So maybe there will be a, a, a m more support from Firebase for iOS developers. Who knows? Yeah. So Firebase is growing bigger and bigger. This is becoming more and more interesting, and possibly. Fast, uh, Firebase will be a must-have tool for any mobile developer in a couple of years. Because Fabric is not around anymore, and you don't have that many alternatives. So that's all about Firebase. Thank you. And if you have any questions, I can answer them right away.